What is the truth? Is it a tangible concept that we can measure on a scale? When Pablo Picasso discussed the truth, he said this, Art is the lie that enables us to realize the truth. It is through art that we make sense of the world. We discover our truths and we impart our knowledge to others. Truth, as told through the written word, is what I present to you tonight in these six tales. So sit back and relax with your favorite drink and listen. I grew up in a small town in Pennsylvania, living in a rural part of town, with four homes within a mile radius of me. I was 14 when this happened, and it was around 3 in the morning on a December night during Christmas break. It was just like any other night. I was up playing the Elder Scrolls and enjoying my time before I went back to school. I always kept my curtains open, at all times, <laughs> mainly because I was too lazy to get up and shut all of them. I remember distinctly that I was defeating Alduin, when a scraping noise became present outside my window. It was faint at first, but drew closer to my home over the course of about 25 seconds. I paused the game and looked outside my window. I saw a man in his fifties or sixties, dressed in ragged clothes with long, unkempt white hair that merged his beard and his hair together. He carried what looked like a metal baseball bat or an axe and walked with a limp. Now, I knew all my neighbors and he wasn't one of them. I watched him walk all the way down my street and then turn a corner. A few minutes later, the scraping sound came back. I was getting scared now and waited for him to come within 50 feet of my house before I looked out. The moment I looked out, he began laughing very loudly and then stopped in front of my home and looked straight into my window, still laughing. I stood there, frozen, unsure of what to do. He stared into my window for a few more seconds and then continued down the road. As soon as he was out of sight, I turned off my console, turned off my lights, closed all my curtains and was ready to dial 911. Sure enough, he came back. But this time he came into my yard and screamed, Where'd you go, little girl? Don't you want to stare some more? This was followed by more laughing. And then he went around the block a few more times. I've never seen him again since that night. I moved six months after the incident, and to this day, I always keep my curtains closed. This is something that happened to me when I was in my previous house a while back. It all started one night when me and my family returned home from bowling, and my father said he had left the back door unlocked by mistake. But luckily, it appeared as if no one broke into our house. How wrong we were. Every third night I'd hear this tapping noise in the floorboards, under the carpet ever so slightly. I usually ignored it as I thought it was just a pipe from the boiler vibrating against the floorboard. When it came to me playing my video games, I'd find controllers out of place or the game stacks were shuffled up. I was kind of a geek so I would assign the games from A to Z. Sometimes I'd get these whispers of my name in a very low pitch. I thought it was my brother playing tricks on me. 
so I kept replying, Go back to bed, you crap stain. One night, my father went into my room and said, Don't tell me this tapping's keeping you awake. I replied back with a nod, and so we unscrewed the floorboards. And then we saw something you'd never ever want to see in your life. It was a homeless person with bloody bones of an unidentifiable dead animal. He kept staring at my dad with a toothless grin. Then he charged at him with a rusty knife. My dad managed to disarm the man and knock him out. In the meantime, I called the police and explained the situation. A police cruiser came in under 10 minutes and they arrested the homeless man. My little sister and I were shopping at a Walmart. We finished up and went with our bags to the little seating area in the mall, next to the Walmart to see if we were hungry enough to get food. Less than a moment after we sat down, a tall, blonde, slender man wearing a yellow coat stood in front of us. He asked us, did you just go get food? We looked at each other and said, uh, yeah, why? So he just glared at us and walked away. He left us for about 10 seconds. And as soon as my sister and I were about to leave, he came back saying, God hates you. You should be punished. You are both sinners. He started yelling at us right there in the mall. He yelled about God pointing his finger at us like we were doing something shameful just sitting there. People stopped to watch, but no one really helped out. He continued to yell for a while longer. I grabbed my little sister's arm and stood up to leave. And he stood in my face and started to yell before a guy's voice said, Dude, chill. The man in the yellow coat looked around and then took off. From somewhere behind us, a female mall cop showed up and asked if we were okay. And if we knew the guy, <laughs> he said the obvious. We didn't, but that we were okay. Uh, we think she walked off to find him. As we were leaving the mall a few minutes later, we saw the guy again. He yelled, God will tell me where you live. I will find you and I will make you pay for your sins. <laughs> Thankfully, God obviously never texted him or called back. This happened to me seven years ago. I'm 20 years old now. My parents were away from home for a family emergency. I am an only child and whenever my parents left and I stayed home, I usually didn't get scared. It was the third night by myself. I was playing video games, eating junk food, that sort of stuff. And then I just hear a knock on the door. I was wondering who could be knocking on someone's door at a late time like this. I could see the man peeping through a small glass window surrounding the door. I could hear yelling. He was saying, I'm really hurt, please help, let me come in. I asked him what's wrong. He said he'd broken his foot. This seemed kind of weird to me. I said I would call up an ambulance for him and told him to wait outside. After I said that, he said, If you don't let me in, I'll slit your throat and cut all your body parts in half. As soon as he said that, I grabbed my dad's shotgun and I grabbed the phone to call the police. I told the man the police were on their way. He told me they won't make it in time. He was trying to bust open my dining room window. By the way he was hitting it, it looked like it was about to break. I quickly ran upstairs into my bedroom and decided to hide under my bed. I called the cops and the operator told me that they would be there in a couple of minutes. As soon as the operator said that, I heard the window break. <coughs> he must have found a big rock in my front yard or something. I could hear him checking all the rooms downstairs. Then I heard him coming up the stairs. He checked my parents' bedroom in the closet. 
Then I heard him trying to open my door. I gripped the shotgun tightly around my hand and waited for him to break down the door. He was now kicking it as hard as he could. In just a couple of hits, he knocked it down. I could see his feet. He tried to open the closet door in my room, which I had locked purposely to confuse him. He said, I know you're in there. I was wondering, should I shoot his leg or try and sneak past him and run out? I wouldn't be able to sneak out without making some kind of noise. At that moment, I had forgot I was under my bed. And when I tried to get up, I hit my head, making a very loud noise. The man had quickly turned around. He said, Oh. Trying to be a smart ass with me now, eh? Then I heard sirens. He said, Oh, fuck. You got lucky this time. But you want the next. He tried to run quickly out of my room, but I grabbed his right foot, making him fall very hard to the ground. I was holding it with all my might. I heard the police rushing up the stairs, and they got a hold of the man. I came out with my shotgun, and the police were now pointing guns at me. I quickly explained everything, and the police understood. Apparently they found the man's van parked in front of my house. He had many knives, duct tape, a camera, and a rope. The police called my parents and told them what happened. They came home three days earlier, and my mum hugged me very tightly, and so did my dad. My mum told me the man had been sentenced to 15 years with a chance of getting parole. We moved from that house a month later, and I had lots of nightmares about it. It took me a long time to get back to normal. This happened about four months ago, a little after I first started dating my boyfriend. It was about 10 or 11 p.m., I'm 18 and my boyfriend is 19. We were driving along a long road. And... And I'm being very vigilant because, well... A deer can go, surprise, I want to wreck your car. At some point, when I was a bit more relaxed, we caught up to the car in front of us. And realized this guy is going extremely fast and is swerving. I was ready to dial 911 on the phone, when the guy just swerved all the way to the left and took down a street sign and got back on the road like nothing had happened. He noticed that we kept getting close enough so I could read his license plate number and continuously tried to speed up to lose us. When I got off the phone and successfully reported him, he pulled off into someone's driveway and turned his lights off. Okay, we thought. It's over. But then, about five minutes later, my boyfriend looked into his rearview mirror and saw the guy about to hit us. At this point he floored the gas, trying to get away from this person who was trying to run us down. Of course, I was screaming all sorts of obscenities and my heart was pounding. The whole time I was looking in the mirror to monitor how close he was. When we decided we couldn't outrun this guy, we sped off, and when we couldn't see him anymore, we pulled into a gas station that had an outside building for restrooms. We pulled into a spot on the side of the building that was hidden from the road completely, and turned off the car engine. We sat in that parking lot for about 20 minutes with my adrenaline pumping ready for him to find us. However, he never did, so we went home. I did not sleep that night. It was around 11.30pm, so it was very late. I went to bed with Bella, which is our German Shepherd. She's only one, so she has a lot of energy. Anyway, I get my pyjamas on and go to bed. My bed faces my closet, which I've been scared of since that movie Insidious. I've closed my closet every night after watching it. When I was going to bed, Bella was sort of looking at the door with her ears up. She wasn't growling, she was just observing. This creeped me out a lot, and I just wanted to fall asleep. Anyway, I go to sleep and later I wake up to Bella growling at my closet. I'm starting to get chills down my spine and I... I want to scream but I don't at the same time. My closet is a push door, 
so anyone could open it. Bella's growling turns into a full on bark. As I can see half a face looking at me, I send out the most blood curdling scream a boy could let out. Bella lunges at him whilst I hear my dad charging across the floor to my room. Bella is latched to his arm. She's very obedient even at a young age. My dad tells her to let go. He grabs the guy by the back of her neck and drags him outside with my toy handcuffs in his hand. I follow him and hear screams of my family as he's being dragged out. My dad wrestles him down to the floor and has him pinned. I handcuff him and my mum calls the police. After 10 minutes of constant shouting from the guy, the police arrive putting him in proper handcuffs. He gives me this pure look of insanity, the kind that makes your soul cry.